<laughs> All right, the next one is uh, Boise's Help, aka SCP 4625. All right, item 4625, level 3 confidentiality. I mean, confidential. I don't know why I said howdy. The containment class, Euclid. Disruption class, Flam. Risk class, Notice. Special Containment Procedures SCP-4625 is to be held in a standard humanoid containment cell outfitted with four Scranton Reality Anchors and an infrared security camera. Discord is cutting you off so much, I can't even tell you're talking. What? Really? Oh, I uh, figured out you were talking because I heard a blip briefly. Okay, so now I know it's not internet that's doing the Discord shit. It's Discord itself. Well, yeah. Alright. <clears throat> Item 4625, level 3, confidential. Containment class, Euclid. Disruption class, Flam. Risk class, Notice. Special containment procedures. SCP-4625 is to be held in a standard humanoid containment cell outfitted with four Scranton Reality anchors and an infrared security camera. SCP-4625 is, is to undergo counseling with Commander Adani Daniels on a weekly basis. Description. SCP-4625 is a male humanoid of French descent. Although the subject appears to be 25 years of age, physically and biologically, the subject has said it was born in 1915, making the subject at least 105 years old. Subject, subject is now low-level type green and is capable of distortion, visible light rays, and noise cancellation over a limited radius. Testing has determined that the subject's abilities have a radius of 40 meters. Discovery. Subject was first discovered by a lost group of hitchhikers in redacted Spain, 20 kilometers from Pyrenees mountain range. The group had come across a seemingly abandoned log cabin. Upon entry, they discovered 4625, who was startled by the group and rendered itself invisible. This was caused by SP4625 manipulating the light rays around him to reflect at different angles, creating a field of invisibility. The group was alarmed and fled the cabin. They eventually encountered four forest wardens who were searching for them. The hikers subsequently recounted the incident to the forest wardens. Foundation assets were alerted to the incident and MTF Omega-12 Achilles Heels was deployed to contain 4625. Upon arrival at the cabin, they located 4625 within the cabin. 4625 did not resist being apprehended and was brought to Site-37. Interview 4625-01 Interviewed 4625 Interviewer Dr. Lu Lucas Castile Forward Following 4625's arrival at Site-37, it was interviewed to determine its abilities and previous history. Begin log. Dr. Lucas My name is Dr. Lucas Castile. Please introduce yourself for the record. 4625 my name is Jean Paul Samas. I think that's Jean Paul. Oh, Jean Paul Samas. I was born in 1950, a year after the Great War had ended, uh, had started. Very well. If it's fine by you, I'm going to call you Jean. For a little while. Mon Doctor. Great. Could you explain your powers and how do you use them? From what we heard, when those hackers found you, you somehow turned yourself invisible. It's a poor man's invisibility. I know through the light around me so that I can't be seen by others, like this. SCP-4625 proceeds to turn his right hand invisible. Visible light cameras in a room are unable to detect 4625's right hand. However, his hand does appear on infrared scanners. 4625 dispels the illusion on his hand after several seconds. 
Interesting. Not many anomalies can do that. Any other abilities that you have? Do you have phone with you? Uh, yeah, I do. Why? Ask them if they can hear my scream. It's a second. Dear Lord, a bit more than next time, if you mind. Ask them. Dr. Lucas complies. They heard nothing, so I'm guessing it's some sort of muffling effect. You could say that, Doctor. Dr. Lucas proceeds to pull TXT-4625-03. Uh, I heard the three up here, goddammit. TXT-4625-01 is a diary discovered in 4625's former residence. And places it on the table. 4625 tenses up upon seeing the item. What did you find that? Did you read it? We found it in it at your residence, and while we, we partly described what it says, what was in her... What? No, you should not have read it. It's my book. You shouldn't have touched it. Faust Deputy, I'll kill you. Guards immediately entered the room and successfully restrained and stated SCP-4625. End log. Closing statement. Following the interview, 4625 was brought back to his containment unit and has refused to communicate with any members of staff since then. TXT-4625-01. The following excerpts were taken from TXT-4625-01. Certain parts of the text are illegible due to damage to to txt-4625-01. Excerpt-01. I saw many people marching in the streets today. The man with a loud voice said that, that they wouldn't do anything to us. That they were peaceful. Mommy said not to trust them. That evening we said our prayers. Then Mommy packed our Star of David into the box. Daddy came back from the cafe across the street looking scared. He made a smile and then and played with me, but later on, I heard him telling Mommy we need to leave before they take us away. Mommy says she doesn't know where to go, but Daddy said he knew some people that, who could help us. Then Daddy saw me peeking from the doorway and told Mommy that he would talk to the people tomorrow. Mommy looked tired and sad as Daddy tucked me in. I asked him if we were leaving. He said we would only be gone for a while, so I don't have to worry. That night, I saw Mommy burning a box from the window. Except there's zero two. I feel very lonely. I don't see my friends anymore. The houses are empty, and Daddy and Mommy don't let me go out anymore. They said it's not safe outside. There are a lot of stones and broken things that can hurt me. I did see my friend Sammy yesterday. There were a group of men that went into his house. One of them had a scary silver eagle on his cap. They made oh. they made somebody on his friends leave the house. I heard a lot of loud bangs once they left. So I cuddled, oh. I cuddled up with my teddy bear to feel safe. Daddy came home looking very strange. He asked me to start packing my things because we were leaving soon. I asked him what happened to Sammy and his family. But Daddy didn't sign anything. I hope they are alright. Excerpt-03 Today Daddy brought me a friend to the house. He called himself Sean. He was very polite. He even called me the prettiest little lady he'd ever met. Daddy left and said that he had to discuss something important with Sean. And went to a study. I tried to listen through the door. But I couldn't hear anything. I didn't even... Here, when they walked to the door and opened it, so I fell down and bruised my knee. Sean felt down, knelt down, took a tiny cloth from his pocket, and tied it around my knee, telling me it would be gone in no time. I like Sean. He's a very nice person. Excerpt-04 We left home in the middle, middle of the night. Daddy made me leave behind another things, but he said he would buy all of them again for me once we're safe. And she let me bring my teddy bear. It's not so scary at night with my teddy bear. Daddy brought me and mommy to a nearby shop. Daddy had a few words with the shopkeeper before he brought us to the back of the shop. 
and got us onto a truck. We traveled for a very long time on the truck, so mommy read me my favorite fairy tale until I fell asleep. Mommy woke me up when we reached the, f the forest. It was still very dark and quiet. Daddy led us into the woods, where we also met Sean and a lot of other people like us. I played quietly with some of the children and shoved off my cute teddy bear while Mommy and Daddy talked to Sean. Excerpt dash zero five. I'm so tired. We hiked for so long through the forest. Until we reached the mountains, we stayed in one of the caves for most of that day. None of the adults are sleeping, but I was not sleepy. So I decided to write in my diary. When my pencil lead broke, I started crying until Sean came over and asked me what was wrong. I showed him my pencil and he frowned. That won't do. He said and checked all his pockets until he found another pencil. He told me it was a magic pencil, as long as I believed it wouldn't. Text illegible. I asked him why we were running away, and he said it was because of bad people who wanted to do bad things to people. I asked him why the bad people were like that. He told me that in life, some people want to do bad things to feel good. I got scared and started crying again, but Sean held my hand and told me that they were also good people. As long as I believe that I'm good, will always win. After that, text eligible. The damage found on TXT-4625 is consistent with blood spatter and fire damage. Addendum 4625-01 On Redacted, a team was sent to a location in Pyrenees Mountain Range that was obtained from TXT-4625-01. The following items of particular notice were found at the location. Item Human Skeletons, 25 Both adult and child skeletons were found in the location, along with their belongings. The skeletons were estimated to have died approximately 80 years ago. And multiple skeletons featured damage consistent with bullet wounds. Scorch and blast marks. Multiple instances located around the exploration site. Analysis indicates that it was caused by a thaumaturgic source. Broken M1 M1917 Einfield rifle. Weapon commonly used by the U.S. and French Army during World War II. STG-45 Assault Rifle, weapon used by the German army during World War II. Oh no, they're gonna bring German party in here in the video. You didn't figure that out a while ago? No, I, I mixed the world wars. Well, Jan was born in world, before World War One. But how old do you think that would make him during World War II? Right. Yeah. Seized Obscure Corpse Troopers 3. Troopers were dressed in Obscure Corpse MK2. Also, mm -hmm. uh, like, just so you know, hints were put earlier through things like the friends going missing, the burning of the box. If you don't know, people's homes and businesses were marked very specifically if they were Jewish. Meaning, they were literally burning that evidence away before the fleeing. Also, the eagle symbol meant that the the German party had visited the, the friend before the friend went goodbye. Oh, that, why did I forget about the eagle symbol with the German the party? The forever goodbye! Yeah, anyways. Jaeger Rustung. Yeah, I know how to say this correctly, because I learned that in German class. It's it, it Jaeger. It sounds like Jean was anti-German party, but yeah. that does not mean he was successful. And he oh, did yeah. his best. I don't know what to say. Well, I mean, we're, we can tell by the items and stuff found in the place. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Jaeger Rustung is literally hunter armor. This particular armor was used in search and destroy missions by Obscure Corpse Troopers from 1943 to 1945. The armor was noted as having been 
thermatologically enhanced and possessing an, an intimidating appearance. Unknown device. Device was found at one of the deceased of Sakura Corps trooper. Although heavily damaged, testing revealed that the device was capable of nullifying the abilities of reality benders at a range of approximately 300 meters. A stuffed teddy bear. Oh. Nothing to say about it. Interview 4625-2. Interviewed SCP-4625. Interviewer Commander, Commander Adani Daniels. MTF IOTA-15 Aziz Hope. Forward, forward. Following a psychological assessment, Site Command decided to assign Commander Daniels to interview 4625 due to similar backgrounds. Wait, are they both French? Are I... they both anti-German party? Oh, I... I think we're, we're gonna find out. Anyways, begin by Commander Daniels. So I'll enter the questions, I guess. My, com my name is Commander Ad Adonis Daniels. Mind if I call you Sean? 4625. I don't care what you call me. All right then, Sean. There's something you, you do care about. You were a fugitive runner for the resistance on France. You would let Jews and other people through the Pyrenees into neutral Spain, where they would be safe from the, from the German party. But that night something happened, didn't it? Didn't. You fucked up, didn't you? Why do you even care? It happened 90 years ago. It's over. It didn't happen 90 years ago. It happened yesterday. What, what are you talking about? They died 90 years ago. It happened yesterday for you. I'm shooting in the dark, but I'm going to guess that you still think about it. Every time you close your eyes, you can still see what happened, can't you? You... Used that trial about 15 times already. Most of it was forced until you got to, to the mountains. And even then there was plenty of caves around for us to hide in. While the day passed, before this, I'd usually only take 15, at most 20 people. I'm guessing with the fall of the purse, everything changed. You don't know the half of it. They were dragging Jews out of their houses and sending them off to the camps. If they didn't shoot them like dogs in the street first. Everyone wanted to get out, and the Germans knew that too. Some of the crowds patrolled the mountains near the main trail. This was later determined to be the Freedom Trail in the Pyrenees Mountain Range. That's why your powers came in. A man, a man who can be invisible and soundless. And even making a group of people disappear. <laughs> yeah. I covered the grip on my cloak. And we'd, be, and we'd head off moving through the mountains to Spain. Sometimes we could cross the borders. And be there in a single night. Other times there'd be too many Germans. Or we'd not have enough time. We'd end up camping out in one of the caves. To wait till the next nightfall. Which was the case that night? Both the group arrived late, and there were a few more crowds than I was comfortable with. But I didn't take chances, so we hid. The next night, we departed, and we were almost there then. The Germans ambushed you, but they could already near the steep rock face. I... I sensed it first, and I realized I could hear someone talking from the back of the group. Normally, they would have been silent, but I could hear them loud and clear. My invisibility field become much harder to maintain suddenly. By the time I realized we were exposed, it was too late. Those things that ambushed us, those beasts were not Germans. They rose out of the forest around us, wearing this, this pitch black armor with red, large red glowing flames where the eyes should be. It was like looking at, at an evil spirit who was staring right back at you. They were German party members too, just that they played around with magic instead. Whatever they were, they wasted no time. Some of them used guns while others shot fireballs out of their palms. My field might make people invisible, but it didn't. It couldn't. Take your time. 
SCP-4625 cries for several more minutes before coming down. I can still see it, how the bullets and fire ripped through their bodies. The look of shock and pain on their faces. I couldn't hold the field for any longer, so I broke it and shouted for the other survivors to follow me out of the mess. Some of the resistance people with me tried to shoot back at the enemy, but their bullets seemed to bounce off of some invisible barrier. One or two went through, and I could hear those monsters shout for help as the bastards fell. But it didn't take long for them to kill my friends as well. What, ha what happened to you and the survivors? It was just me and our little girl. We found an opening and made a break for it. I tried to use my abilities, my abilities, but I could feel something blocking them. As we took cover behind a rock, I saw one of those things carrying a large box on his back. So I took a gamble and shot him. First few rounds bounced off, but the last got him. He fell back and the machine just fizzled out. I felt my powers return, cast another illusion over us. I, I told her things were going to be alright. She was scared, and she was crying and hugging her teddy bear. I told her she would be fine, so that she wouldn't be so scared. I didn't want her to be scared. I want, I, I wanted, I could have. I should, should have. Commander Daniel grabs SCP-4625 by the shoulders and shakes him gently. I hey, this. it's okay, kids. Okay, it's all right, okay? Not to, you're not there anymore. You're in the screen. You're safe. And he also take a breath and take a step back. SCP-4625 takes several deep breaths before regaining their composure. Thank you, it's just... I know what that feels like. I know, I know it feels like a mountain, but I need to know what happened that night. I missed one. He came up from our right side and blasted a fireball at where we were. I saw it. I tried to pull her away, but I, I wasn't quick enough. It sent us both flying back into the grove of trees. For some reason, my illusion still held. Next morning, I woke up, and I realized what had happened. I found her. I tried to do my best, but I can't. I can't go anymore. Stop, please. End log. Closing statement. Interview has ended following deterioration in SCP-4625's mental condition. Therapy. Yep. Interview 4625-3. Interviewed SCP-4625. Interviewer, Commander Idani Daniels, MTF IOTA 15, Izzy's Hope. Commander Daniels, I hope you're feeling better since last week, Sean. 4625. No. More nightmares, Commander. Many more. I see her every night now. She keeps on blaming me. Why didn't you save me? She asks. I cannot answer her. Well, come to that in due time. What happened after you woke up that morning? <clears throat> Fine. Germans were coming, so I fled. Ran to Spain and head there for the rest of the war. Afterwards, I built the cabin in the woods and stayed there. So you bastards picked me up. Happy. <sighs> Look, I'm sorry, all right. I didn't mean to hurt you. I just need to know what happened, so that we can better understand what happened to you. You don't care. None of you do. None of you know how I feel. How it hurts. You can't even imagine what I had to go through. Well, here's the news, John. I do understand what you're going through, because I've been there myself. You've said that before, but you never said how. How do you know what I feel, Commander? How? Because my mistakes caused me to lose people I cared about. Broke the promises I made to them. SCP-4625 looks stunned. It was four months ago. Some clinic had gotten invited by the sentient replicating flesh blob that consumes people. We entered the clinic and it was empty, save for the corpses face down on the floor. We got in the call that there were some survivors holed up in one of the back rooms. And I was focused on that. I told Jenkins and Daniel to hold the exit while we went to check the situation out. We were there in a matter of minutes, I found the door locked. They all were inside safe. But then I heard the sound, uh, heard the screams from the front of the clinic. Your soldiers? Turns out the blob was smarter than I expected. It shapeshifted itself as the body at the entrance of the clinic. 
and when a bear ambushed them, when I went looking, it well started devouring Noah alive. Me and Jacob swashed back to see them, screaming and writhing in pain, as it just tore through them. Jenkins' bottom half was already just pure viscera, while Daniel had holes all over him as the thing devoured from the inside out. I tried to shoot the blob on Jenkins, but it kept eating him up. Jacob's head is fine with the loss, so I. You ordered him to burn your friends alive. For the weeks, I struggled to do anything. All I could think about was how my mistake caused two of my men to suffer and die horribly. My mind was torturing me, telling me I could have saved them, but I didn't. I was stuck in this loop, constantly feeding my own de destruction. I came close to the edge several times. If, if I didn't get help, I probably would have gone so over. I guess we've both been through a lot, but I've endured it though, through it. And eventually, I realized something. We can't control life. We're only human, and we're bound to make mistakes. And for people like us, mistakes don't come cheap. But life goes on, so we have to move on. How far can you move on without being crippled? The pain is still there, because we still know we screwed up. Our mistakes cost people's lives. Nothing we do is ever going to make up for that. And how can you forget such a thing? It just means that you don't care about it anymore. I never said we should forget the past, but we have to stop living in it. The past is the past. It has no power over us. What happened to both of us was terrible. But we have to learn to get back up. But you don't get it. The pain. Doesn't it still wound you every time you get up? Isn't there every time you fall asleep just waiting to torture you over and over again? What can you do against it? You're right, the pain will never go away. It will still be there wa waiting for you. But you have to carry on. You was that pain. And the reason you feel that pain is because you still blame yourself for what happened that night. But you need to realize you, you we can't control everything. We make mistakes. And they have consequences. We have to learn how to accept those consequences. Learn from your mistakes. Be better than who you are. You were last time, so that mistake doesn't happen again. SCP-4625 begins to tear up and sob. You're going to feel fucked up inside for a long time. The pain, the pain will always be there. But time will help to smooth over some of those sharp edges. And if you carry on doing anything, and if you carry on doing, trying to help others, like what you did before, it will get easier. You'll still feel pain, but it'll hurt less, and you'll sleep a bit more soundly at night. And all this can hap can't happen unless you choose to forgive yourself. But what if it happens again? What do you do then? Slow down and take a break. Forgive yourself for a mistake. Learn from it. So that it doesn't happen again. It'll be better. Thank you, Commander. End log. Interview 4625-7. Interviewed SCB-4625. Interviewer Commander Adani Daniels, MTF IOTA-15, Ozzy's Hope. Commander Daniels. Good morning, Sean. How have you been so far? SCB-4625. I'm... I'm still struggling, Commander. The dreams are still bad. Enough, enough with the Commander already. I'm a Donnie, to my friends, and that includes you. Yes. Yes, commit. I mean, yes, a Donnie. How about out the dreams? Do they still come often? It doesn't feel like it's getting any better. I still get those dreams every one or two days. Sometimes the same thing all over again. Everyone dead. Everyone dead because of me. You said that was sometimes only. What about the other times? Are they just as bad? Well, no, I guess. Once or twice, some of us actually make it out. Make it to a village in Spain. And had there until the war was over. So it's actually getting better. I know it's hard to see, but it's... But it is that. Doesn't feel like it, that's for sure. 
and that's because you're too focused on all the pain and misery. I know it's tough, but you have to start with a smaller respite. Those silver lightings, you just have to use the dreams. You used to have dreams of an dagger, right? Yes. SPCP4625 is visibly tearing up. And now you're only having it once every two days. It might seem like an insignificant improvement, but it's still an improvement. And over time, it builds up so builds up. Slowly but surely, it'll be there. I just don't want to feel pathetic anymore. I just want the pain to stop, but it won't stop. No, it probably never will. But like I said before, pain can be overcome. You'll feel it over time, but you'll slowly be able to numb itself to its effects. Never completely, but enough to keep you going. And as time passes, you'll be able to wear that pain as armor. And armor? What do you mean? It it hurts me. I can use it as armor. It's it's like wearing a poisonous shirt. SCP-4625 lets out a mirthless laugh. Not really. This pain is caused by your experience. By your trauma over making the wrong call. But pain, pain can be used in many ways. It can be a reminder. Not about the failures of the past, but about the hope, hope for the future. And it can be an armor. Be an armor because if it happens again in the future, You'll be a bit more ready to face the consequences. I... I think I get it now. But what future do I have? Well, although your mental state is slightly fragile, the higher... ups have agreed that we could use someone like you in the field. And well, I'm inclined to agree. You have a useful skill set as an infiltration and exfiltration agent. And frankly, we need all the help that you can get. Using anomalies? That's going to backfire one day. It does, but we've learned from it. The question is, are you up for it? Hmm. Not now. I, I still have some demons left to deal with. And I'm still scared of myself. But in times, perhaps. We're always going to be scared, regardless if it's ourselves or something else. It's about having the courage to keep moving forward. Even when it seems hopeless to do so. It's... That's how you find the light. End log. And that's it. With that anomaly. It got very depressing. <laughs> that's what happens when you deal with uh, PTSD. It's <laughs> so many interviews, yeah. Wait, that, that's not... Wait, is this it? No, it's not. Where's my... Oh my gosh, it didn't... It did not save the, the, the thumbnail. Okay, there we go. Oh my god. What the fuck? That sounds like that's going to be a fool. What the fuck? Am I guessing wrong? <laughs> they took Beast a bit too, literally. Oh. <laughs> That's... He's a French human! Wait, is this... Is the girl in, the, in here supposed to be the child? Are, are they sexualizing child victims? Probably. I mean, they already oh. did it with the chi child SAP. Look what I can confirm. They did that with multiple child SAPs. <laughs> I, I think this is a four. What, what, what would you say? Yeah, pretty much. I also think this is inappropriate. If we age her up, it's fine. <laughs> uh, I know, Bookworm's saying that because that's 
how he's imagining what they're thinking, but yeah. us, I think I like it. Yeah, also they said they look like beasts. Only look. But it was actually the suits made look intimidating. That's what the suits were. Well, look like beasts is literally just an old slang for uh. looking intimidating or dangerous or aggressive. They took it literally. <laughs> That's because they know nothing about history. Yeah. This is literally an SCP steeped in very dark history. Yeah. The real question is, is there going to be more racism, sexism, or inaccuracy, inaccuracy to history? Oh my gosh. <laughs> or inaccuracies to mental health. <laughs> my chat is on just as... Werewolf Daddy Uwu, it hurt typing that. <laughs> so, unfortunately, this Werewolf Daddy is bad, is a fascist. And a Jeremy Party member, which is worse. Are we ready? Well, I'm ready. Zanjiu, Bookworm, are you ready for uh, a content farm to. It's the same thing, right? Uh, Chao. Insensibly about the German party and the people the German party hurt. So oh, I just realized something we both missed. What? Oh, uh, the background it building with the. It has the FS badge on. It has the FS badge on. Oh. Yeah, because they also nicknamed it in their title, the SS Division Werewolves. <laughs> oh. It's, it's oh. Izzy's hope. Sanji said no, but proceed anyway. Yeah. Also, be prepared for me to go silent because of my past. <laughs> but my family's past. <laughs> yeah, at least he had to change the swats. He's not gonna fuck him up for that. Yeah. My family has literally no connection, as far as I know. The closest to it is, uh, I had a, have a relative who I am descended from, who left Germany an unknown amount of years before World War II. And decided he is no longer German. He is American. Yeah. And we don't know what his original name was. Now, how much is this going to offend me with having several of my members killed in the camps? Uh. <laughs> uh. All right. Okay, so they did include any extra people, so yes. Let's prepare to be horrified. <laughs> we we we're already starting off the werewolves. <laughs> I feel like that. I'm just going to predict that this here. I feel like it's going to end with a zero. Yeah. <laughs> Three, two, one. The creature breathed heavily, surveying the land in front of it. On its back was some sort of large electronic device. Keep quiet. The man whispered to the little girl by his side. He looks more British than French. Yes, he does. Also, why is he dressed British? Also, what was the hair color of that SCP? I believe they actually said... A male of humano a male humanoid of French descent. Okay, it does not say his hair or eye color. Fair enough. Only right. that he's French. Mm-hmm. I'm scared. I know. So am I. It'll be over soon. I promise. As he looked back up, it had turned around. 
its red eyes scanning the area around him. Had it heard them talking? It shouldn't have been possible, but something had felt off all night. He looked down at the gun in his hand. He knew how to use it, but hadn't had to before. It wasn't supposed to go like this. What the hell had happened? The little girl looked at him, the you fear apparent that. in her. Yeah. Also, this is France in, like, the 1900s, right? So he probably would have had to hunt, at least. Yeah. But hunting doesn't magically exist. Meat pops out of nowhere. Also, hold on. The gun he would have, most likely it would be one of the broken M1917 Enfield rifles. Yeah. That would have probably been the easiest for him to get. Yeah. What's it say? It's say, uh, summary. Uh, I'm double checking to see if they. So it's. Uh, so count and shot. No, it doesn't say like he didn't use a handgun. So he most likely used well, an yeah, assault but rifle. It, but it also never said the guy holding the box was a werewolf. True. There was multiple in that group, and they were all human. <laughs> Booker says, "And a rifle is not a handgun." I'm at least I'm pretty sure. <laughs> A hundred percent that a rifle works very differently than a handgun. Yeah. So I think a handgun can fire a lot quicker while rifles take some recoil. Not all rifles have a recoil, but uh, all rifles shoot slower. Yeah. There's also a chance, depending on the type of rifle, that it might also have a blade at the end of, the, of it. Yeah. The older rifles especially typically had that since they fired even slower. Yeah. <clears throat> In her eyes, he had to do this. It was the only way. The creature had turned back, but wasn't moving away. He raised the gun and lined up the sights. The shot rang out as it ricocheted off the device on its back. That did Damn happen. It. He it ricocheted not off the device. This time, the shot rang true. This the creature is not fell forward. How reality works. Yeah. Also, the handgun looks like something from our day and age. Yeah. Because I'm pretty sure handguns back then looked less developed. Would you like to see what a handgun looks back then? Sure. Yep, and Book of Russia says, yeah. French, World War II. Oh, there's a list of uh, weapons used by France in World War II. Oh. Any of them handguns? <laughs> yes. Let me put a picture right here. Okay, I can see one of them looking close, but there is differences. I sent it to Bookworm. Like, Very nice guns, may I say. Yeah. They don't look modern by any way whatsoever, but they do look like there were four handguns. I don't count the fifth one at the bottom because... That is more of a, mm -hmm. it's basically the closest to a small, that's, it's basically a small automatic. Yeah. And that's not a handgun. I would take two hands. Yeah, and also the SACM35A. It looks a lot thinner around the barrel area and bulkier around the handle than the one in the video. So it looks in the video, it looks bulkier. Well, 
the video I'm guessing is using a more modern gun, better a gun from a different country. Yeah, because look at it a little bit. Maybe? Am I wrong? You're not wrong. That doesn't look like the same gun type. Okay. It also looks like a different metal. Yeah, oh yeah, that's true. The way the light is covering it, it looks more like light would hit a plastic rather Aye. than a metal. Alright, we ready to continue? Yes, I'm sorry. You're fine. Alright. Word. Dead. As he let out a breath, something oh, well, erupted in the guns that work. Yeah. Wouldn't he be like more jolted back and not just slump forward? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, alright, then let's continue. Corner of his eye. He turned his head as the flame came towards him. He awoke in a cold sweat. It slowly came back to him now. He was locked Why up. Is he naked? The people from the SCP Foundation had found him a few days ago. <laughs> Gosh, and disturbing content or <laughs> disturbing content and so set yourself warned. After showing a German party werewolf. I, I don't know why they want to stare at the French man naked after he has a traumatizing experience. Yeah, I'm pretty or sure. Or why they're acting like this, the dreams are all new information. Yeah, also, they found him in a cabin. Clothed. Yeah, clothed. <laughs> we can only experiment on naked guys. Oh my god, boy. Hey, face. Welcome back. Today I bring you SCP-4625, Oise's Hope. The two men had been hiking all day. After a few hours, it all started to look the same. If they didn't find shelter or a path soon, they could be in real trouble. Up ahead in the distance, they saw what appeared to be a cabin. As they approached, Are they, they found a small themselves house already? situated in a quiet spot. It appeared run down and uninhabited. With these temperatures, the fireplace would surely have been lit. It was a spot of luck finding this cabin. They wouldn't freeze to death, after all. The man reached for the door handle and turned it, heaving the door open with a push. To their amazement, a man sat at the far end of the room, a book in his hands. He glanced up at them with astonishment, and then disappeared right before their eyes. A low-level type green, you say? Yup. They gave some crazy story to the officials That's that the found fastest them contradiction of a man I've ever seen. disappearing before their eyes. Yeah. And that story went through the channels and ended up on our doorstep. Indeed. Hopefully he hasn't gone too far. <laughs> well, we should be on the ground soon. I'm what? going to suit up. The small cabin stood in the distance. Nobody had been in or out since the authorities had left a few days ago. A two-kilometer cordon had been set up like to make sure... Yeah. He, he's just, he's, um, thinking of auto death and depressed. Yeah. <laughs> Having not so nice thoughts about what you might do to yourself doesn't make you dangerous to other people. Yeah. Also, I'd be fucking spooked if people broke into my house, too. Yeah, I feel like it's weird to be spooked about people breaking into your house. <laughs> Even though the foundation does it all the time. <laughs> sure, he didn't escape. So was the police. If he, in fact, <laughs> was still here at all. Keep these with you. Infrared? Why? Just a suspicion I have. You're the doc, doc. Let's go. They approach the house slowly. Everything looked quiet. Chen knocked on the door. SC... Foundation? Um... Police? Jeez. <laughs> Just go in, would you? He pushed the door open. The room was dusty. Light streaming in through the oh, window. Oh, yes. The demon candle. Uh... 
Wait, is this? No, this is the same house. This is the same house as the witch had. Yeah, they just changed some things around. Yeah, it's the same But it is the house. same building, just different furniture. <laughs> they didn't even bother to re redraw it. Oh, so once again, the foundation introducing themselves. Yeah, they would just say they're the police. <laughs> they wouldn't have announced who they were. Damn. Yeah. Windows. Chen signaled to the two agents. What is wrong with her face? <laughs> she has no face. She only has a nose. <laughs> uh, Reusing oh. assets, what a surprise. <laughs> She's in an SCP too. <laughs> Check it out. They moved off down the hallway, He's an looking for yeah. the man. Looks quiet. Too quiet. Chen raised the goggles yeah, to his say. eyes. They Why is the one guy's boyfriend always the whitest person in the room? <laughs> she Why knows. Is he whiter like than every other book. white person? Well, things confirm they're dating. Tell me they don't act like a couple. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they do. I'm gonna call them a couple until it's confirmed or denied. I don't know. Anyways. <laughs> there, right in front of him, the man moved to stand, but Chen pulled out his gun. Don't move a finger. He the said man wire. His I hands in surrender. Said wire. Okay, okay. <laughs> Chen sat on the couch of Kloss's hotel room. Do we take him back with he us? He went willingly. Yeah. He put up no fight. Yep. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. My gut feeling is that this guy could be helpful with his abilities, and his demeanor wasn't aggressive. Well, he was hiding from us. Out of self-defense, he didn't try to escape before we got there and came into custody without a fight. Alrighty, let's fly him back and see. My name is Jean-Paul Soum. I was born in 1915, a year after the Great War had started. Thank you for yes, coming with us without a struggle, Mr. Soum. Yeah, they're dating. <laughs> I don't want to fight. Okay. I've never wanted to fight. All I want is to be left in peace. I understand, and we'll do our best to abide by your wishes. But first, we need to know a bit about you. You can turn yourself invisible? It's a poor man's invisibility. I alter the light around me so that I can be seen by others. But you suspected this already. Kloss raised an eyebrow at the man. The infrared goggles. Ah, yes. I had a suspicion. Very smart, mon docteur. Chen came walking into the interrogation room, an old, leather-bound journal in his hand. What? Where did you get this? Did They're you read it? We've been transcribing it, yes. PTSD. Yeah, well, I don't think it was happening yet. I think it's during before that. I think it was Dr. Lucas. During the first interview. Okay, they're having him replace Dr. Lucas. Dr. Lucas Castile. Do you think we'll see the other doctor at least? Yeah, the, the most important character in this anomaly. Sorry, not doctor, uh, commander. Yeah, commander. As well as they didn't even mention his sound ability. They have not yet. That is correct. They're probably gonna make all the interviews the same one. <laughs> yeah. uh... What? You had no right. That's personal. Give it to me. Hey, why don't you take it down a notch before I baget your- Okay, that's enough. Both of you. <laughs> was, he, was he being racist to the Why the is the so aggressive? <laughs> he's been nice this entire time, and he's like, How about I baget your man? How fucking aggressive <laughs> can you get? Kill your boyfriend down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh Paul, God. we merely want to understand your past. Then you could just ask next time. Okay, yes, you're right. 
I apologize. Fine. Would you please explain to us what happened on this night in 1944? He, he refused to talk for a while. After he saw the diary in their hands. They skipped that part and now they're skipping Commander Daniels. Who needs someone who you can connect to on a le personal level due to trauma related issues? When uh, you have hmm? the magical white guy. Yeah. Also, Bookman says, I can't really be racist. The French is not a race, but is very aggressive. Is French really not a race? I, I think he's being uh, comedic. It's nationality, bright. <laughs> yeah, French is a nationality. I I only the race would be European. I I I thought that because under technicality, Irish is a, a race because it's their their whiteness is different well, than technically, Caucasian. There's no genetic right. There's no genetic thing behind race. Literally yeah. none. Yeah, so I just, <laughs> eh. A race like Irish or French, all of that is a social construct. There's nothing genetic behind it. Yeah, okay. Well, let's continue. The last entry in the journal. He took a deep breath. <sighs> Wait, fine. The little girl looked what? at him with a smile on her face, teddy bear in hand. This man, Jean-Paul, her father said he was a friend, but she hadn't seen him before. It's not a jolly rancher. she liked him. <laughs> he was kind to her and something about him made her feel safe. She had been scared for a while now. The men oh with God. the guns were always on the streets. Her daddy had said she must remain quiet. And if anyone asked her if she was Jewish, she was to shake her head. The night that didn't before, happen. They had burnt or destroyed most of their most precious things. Her daddy had cried when he had uh, to burn their star of David. He said it thing. wasn't because we had. That's just a Jewish symbol. Well, look at it. It's a Jewish symbol, but it's fabric. That was probably a stamp literally put on their clothes to show that they're Jewish. Yeah. That's not precious. That's literally trying to avoid getting killed. Yeah. Oh. If I remember correctly, oh. isn't it the Star of David? Yes, that's the Star of David. And that's what they put on the Jewish people to identify them. They had it put on their clothes. Yep, alright. That's why I said the fabric Star of David was especially bad to call precious. Yeah. I lost our faith. But because others had, it was just for a time. Then everything would be well again. Jean Paul came for them in the night. The happened. only thing she was allowed yeah. to bring with. Her <coughs> was her teddy bear. They snuck out of Paris that night and into the mountains. Jean Paul told them it would take a day or two to reach Spain. Then everything would be fresh. He had more and new. people. They would be safe. They spent the night hiding in a oh cave. Oh my god. They heard the men with guns walking and searching outside. Only one of them had the Her device. Because only one device was recovered. Yes. Said not to worry, but she knew they were looking for them. The next morning came, and they rested through the day. Jean-Paul said it was too bright They're and risky so much. to travel by daylight. The yeah. evening would be fine. He sat yeah, down and played with her and Teddy. Yeah. She felt safe with him. That was the last entry. What happened after? He let out a deep sigh. <sighs> As you wish. We moved through the mountains, but something was off. I'm also able to shield sound, to make us silent. As we moved on, I heard a voice from behind us. 
The mother was saying something that shouldn't have been possible to hear. Then the gunfire started. They had found us. Within moments there were flashes of light and fire. Those creatures were everywhere, the machines on their backs. I know now there was some sort of device to cancel or obstruct my abilities. But that wasn't even the worst of it. These creatures must have been men, but transformed by magic or some other dark art. They were Obscura Corps. They shot fire from what? the palms of their hands. They did an anime moments, reference with the hand thing. So I took the girl and ran. My only hope to get far away enough from them to use my powers again and then escape to Spain. But it wasn't to be. I saw one of them hop ahead, scouting for us and blocking the path to freedom. We hid, but I knew it wouldn't be enough. I shot him. The first shot hit the device on his back, but the second found the target. I started to clock us again. I thought it was over, but it wasn't. One of them was behind us already. That's not he invisible. shot a ball of flame from his hands, because the last thing I saw was fire. I awoke the next day. Somehow, my powers must have held up overnight. I searched for the little girl. Maybe she had gotten away. Then I found her. And... And it was too late. I'm so sorry for what you've been through. Oh, it's been over them. 70 years, yes. and I still cannot forgive myself. Look, I've lost men too. You need to learn to carry on. How? How can I stop the pain? You can't. Or pause. Hey, I'm paused. They're literally dismissing PTSD issues. Yep. Suck it up is not how people deal with it. That's not how you deal with it. No one in the. No one in the article, including Commander Daniels, ever suggested the best way to deal with it. suck it up. That's the most toxic way to ever suggest how to deal with PTSD. Hold on. I get it. Fact, that's. Huh? I want to hit this. Is may I say something? Sure. One of the number one reasons people used to die from PTSD the most, or what they used to call shell shock, was due to the idea that men needed to suck it up. And they ended up killing themselves or hurting themselves. Or hurting people they love. Mm -hmm. And they're belittling that right now, right there. I mean, they already belittled other horrible things, but I'm just saying, as equally bad as the other things they are belittling, and especially in the way they're doing it. Also, I'm acting silent about this, but I am not. Happy with the German party portrayal of things, as well as how they're handling the I, Jewish. I I don't blame you. I I've just been silent. <laughs> That's why I bit busted. Will you be okay? I'm fine. I can continue going forward. It wasn't as bad as the previous German party one. That's valid. <laughs> At least not yet. Oh. <laughs> Can't, but it can get better. Make yourself useful. Find a meaning to life again. A meaning? Listen, Jean-Paul, it's too early to discuss this, but I think a man with your abilities could have a future with us. Oh with my God. Foundation. Work with you? Yes, helping others yeah, like yourself. Uh, right now. Would it be bad for us to rate it right now?
Okay, I'm just gonna s skip to one part. Because I just saw something. <laughs> I am... What the fuck? You ready? Yeah. Well, that's one thing. <laughs> it looks like it's made out of wood. Okay, let's look at the picture of the actual... Uh... And it, oh, that is not listed on that picture. It's supposed to be M one nine one six carbine. Oh. Yeah, it said that in the article. It was M one nine one six. Yeah, they don't look alike. <laughs> But what happens next is what I was shocked by. Are you ready? Yeah. Weapon commonly used by the U.S. and French Army during World War II. STG-45 assault rifle. Weapon used by the German Army during World War II. Three deceased Obscura Corps troopers. Troopers were dressed in Obscura Corps Mark II Jäger Rüstung, literally hunter armor. This particular armor was used in search and destroy missions by Obscura Corps troopers <laughs> from 1943 to 1945. The armor was noted as having been thaumatologically enhanced. The werewolves were just furries. The werewolves were just furries. I have to say, it didn't sound that anywhere in the article. <laughs> and possessing an intimidating appearance. A stuffed teddy bear. Our history is a dark one. Some things are harder to forget or to move on from. Though the pain might never live, it will become buried. Yeah, I just wanted to show that. <laughs> the werewolves. So even though they look like werewolves, it's a furry suit. They were just patches of furries. Okay. <laughs> Four. Oh yeah, they 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 removed all the characters. They removed a few characters, yeah, quite a few. Yeah. Somehow. Added gore or violence? Four. Yeah, it kind of added more shit. And they totally changed the story, so four. Yeah. They shouldn't have done that. Not the... You know what, that's fair. I just put my own feelings. <laughs> I didn't even say a word. I agree with your feelings. I'm sorry. When... <laughs> when... A video was so bad that it touches on something like Fascism, death, and other things that cause death and suffering to such a degree that at one point, the two people watching it are like, why don't we just skip this useless bullshit? Probably not a good reflection on the video. Yeah, we got two SCPs left. We're almost done. <laughs> 